Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the first workshop organized as a part of the NSF funded PREPARE initiative. PREPARE, which is a short form for pandemic research in preparedness and resilience, is a virtual organization created as a result of a grant from the NSF with the explicit goal of facilitating communication and collaboration among science scientists, engineers, and broadly the entire community interested in pandemic research. The NSF research community is uniquely situated to ensure that multidisciplinary and cutting edge science funded and completed through the science directorate, as well as other directorates can help society address the challenges in responding to the ongoing and future pandemics. From online education to social media infodemics to vaccine distribution and multi-scale modeling, as well as pervasive cyber environments, Sci scientists are poised to make a tremendous impact to respond and prepare for future pandemics, but also their secondary and tertiary impacts. Technologies such as Zoom and WebEx that we all use today, as well as digital contact tracing apps developed by individuals serve as some of the excellent examples of computing technologies that were developed and have been very helpful during this pandemic. An important end goal of the PREPARE program is to create a pandemic roadmap. The roadmap will serve as a blueprint for researchers, funding agencies, and policymakers on the role of computing and information sciences and developing breakthrough solutions for pandemic preparedness and resilience. The PREPARE team, of course, is made of several different groups. First of all, the NSF. You're gonna hear opening remarks by Professor Margaret Martinosi that will overview NSF and size response to the COVID-19 and its impact on the research community. Her presence today affirms the commitment NSF has made to not only furthering science research, but also to ensuring that cutting edge science funded by the NSF is relevant and applicable in real time to crisis like pandemics that we are facing today. We're also going to hear opening remarks tomorrow from Professor Gurdeep Singh, who is the NSF Division Director of CNS, and then finally closing remarks from Dr. Irvin Gyan Chandani, who is a senior advisor to the NSF director, as well as NSF deputy assistant director for size. And like Margaret, their support to this initiative is critical to the project's success and means a lot for the prepare team. In addition, we would like to thank size leadership and the program directors for their support and feedback. In particular, NSF program directors, Dr. James Joshi, Nina Amla, Indrajit Ray, Mitra Basu, and Wendy Nielsen have provided us with valuable feedbacks and suggestions, their own suggestions, as well as those that they receive from other size PDs to define and shape the virtual organization. Second group is all of you who are present here today. The investigators who have been funded by various size programs, as well as broadly by NSF and other funding agencies. Today, many of you are participating as a result of the rapid grants that you have received, and we hope to hear more from you in the poster session. We believe that by fostering a collaboration and building a cohesive community around all the participants, this group can develop life-changing results and methodologies with a global impact. It's heartening to see the depth and breadth of the researchers participating in this workshop. Your involvement demonstrates the absolute commitment we need to develop effective science and technology policies to support our nation's readiness for the next pandemic. As we'll see in the poster session, there's a diverse research ecosystem here that extends far beyond epidemiology. Science research in particular demonstrates how we can address computing challenges that arise from everyone working from home in increasing numbers, students, online campaigns, psychological effects of social distancing, et cetera. Our prepare team also includes a steering committee of experts from industry, academia, government agencies, who are thoroughly committed to the success of this project. They are excited about the salient impact this community can have on future research directions in support of facing the next pandemic from a place of strength and preparedness. And we will actually hear from one of the members tomorrow, Sir Roy Anderson, on this topic. You can learn more about the steering committee members on our website, prepare-vo.org. Finally, our prepare team includes myself, Dr. Simon Levin from Princeton, Lee Xiong from Emory University, 
a Nilwali country from UAE, and our very, very significant program management team led by Erin Raymond and Golda Barrow, who are here at UVA. I want to thank all of you for supporting this. I also want to thank the program committee members, Dr. Fei Wang from Cornell University and Srini Venkatraman from UVA for their efforts during the planning of this particular event. Now to a quick note on the workshop itself. We'll hear more about the details after Margaret's talk. This is the first workshop we are organizing as a part of the PREPARE initiative. This also serves as a kickoff meeting for the project. The goal for this workshop is to identify critical research paths that can become topical areas for future research workshops and provide a framework for creating the roadmap that I mentioned earlier. The other goal is to bring size rapid grantees as well as scientists broadly interested in computing to identify important research challenges in computing and information science. With this goal in mind, the two-day workshop consists of poster sessions that is meant to showcase the ongoing work by the community, a keynote talk by Sir Roy Anderson, and several breakout sessions that will give researchers time to interact among themselves. We hope that the workshop will help us identify important topical areas of interest, as well as to get an initial sense of challenges that we all are likely to face as we develop innovative technologies. So with that, let me go ahead and introduce Professor Margaret Martinosi, who has kindly agreed to speak to us briefly to begin and kick off this workshop. She's no stranger to most of you here, but let me give you a brief bio and thank her for being here. Professor Martinosi is the NSF's Assistant Director for Computer and Information Science and Engineering SICE. With an annual budget of approximately $1 billion, SICE Directorate at NSF has a mission to uphold nation's leadership in scientific discovery and engineering innovation through its support of fundamental research and education in computer and information science and engineering, as well as transformative advances in research cyber infrastructure. Margaret is on leave from Princeton University, where she has been a faculty since 1994 and the Hugh Trumbull Adams 35 Professor of Computer Science. She has also served as Associate Dean of Princeton School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Her research interests are in computer architecture and hardware software interface issues in both classical and quantum computing systems. She's a fellow of the ACM and the IEEE. In addition, her research has earned her many, many accolades including the 2018 IEEE Computer Society Technical Achievement Award, the 2013 Anita Borg Technical Leadership Award, the 2015 Marie Pistelli Women in Design Automation Award. She's also been very active in the CRA community, where she served over a decade on the board of CRA's committees, associations on widening participation, CRAWP, and led its effort as a co-chair for two successive years. In those roles, she helped lead efforts improving coverage and synergy of CRAWB programs for women, as well as for other groups that were underrepresented within size. Her work on these topics has been honored with the ACM SIGARC Allen Birnbaum Distinguished Service Award. Please join me in welcoming Dr. and Professor Martinosi. The floor is yours, ma'am. Thank you, Mara, for the kind introduction. And, and thank you all for being here. I, I can't think of anything more important for us to be doing in December of this quite uh, unusual year than to come together and think about how to lay a roadmap for what's forward. I want to ask maybe for all of you to stop and think about where you were, say, March 20th, because we have been through an extraordinary amount together as a world this year. And yet it's really astounding to think back to where we were in March. When I was asked to sort of greet this meeting, uh, I often do, as many ADs do, little five-minute greetings at the beginning of meetings. But in this case, James Joshi, the Cognizant Program Officer, encouraged me to give a bit more information on what uh, responses NSF and SIS have done with regards to COVID this year. And so that's what I will do. Bearing in mind that, as with all of you, uh, in March, things were really busy. And uh, one of the things that I am proudest of is the degree to which we, as a community and NSF internally, created this response so much on the fly. One of the things I'm hopeful for from 
this community and from this meeting is that the next time we're faced with a situation like this, well, hopefully there won't be as much of a next time, but if there is, there'll be a roadmap, there'll be a sense of preparedness. That's your mission now. Um, and I'm so glad that you signed up to embark on that mission. With this, I want to uh, thank you all for being here and in particular thank the PI team for PREPARE, the workshop program committee, the steering committee that's now formed for this event, and all the many NSFers who supported this workshop and this program. It is so important and we're so grateful. I'm going to basically sequence through a bunch of slides that give different snippets of NSF's responses from March to the present and some thinking behind those responses, the strategy for them and uh, the goals for them. And it seems natural to start with this response, uh, partly because in March, one of the first sets of discussions that happened within NSF was a sense of being ready to take on rapids in this topic area and to cultivate, to plant an awful lot of research seeds around this area uh, of COVID-19 and related pandemic responses. It's clear, as Maud, I've already mentioned, the degree to which our size community plays a strong role, both in sort of modeling uh, viruses, modeling disease transmission, um, but also in mitigating the effects of pandemics by providing the technology that allows us to interact across the miles at scale. Um, one of the goals that we had when we received the $75 million of CARES Act supplement funding, we were directed to put that into RAPIDS. As an agency, NSF was directed to put that supplement, that $75 million into RAPIDS. And we did, one of our goals within size was to ensure that those many rapids on many interesting areas could come together and work in some degree of synergy and alignment. And that's what PREPARE is about. It's about ensuring that there are meeting places virtually uh, where you can come together to align your efforts over the year and beyond. And we're very grateful for this VO being hosted at uh, University of Virginia and the sense of um, sort of synergy and alignment that it's bringing to the many investments that we made through RAPIDS. The rest of this talk is in some sense, it's about uh, trying to make lemonade out of lemons, as they say. This has been a challenging year. I don't wanna make light of the very real and tragic issues that have faced us this year. In the midst of that, NSF and SIZE felt like it was very much our responsibility to help the academic community um, by ensuring that we continue to make investments where we could, um, because the best thing that NSF can do for the research community in many ways is to keep our funding going out on schedule. The other way in which this is sort of a lemons to lemonade kind of situation is about recognizing ways in which our technologies, our ideas can help mitigate pandemic impacts. And so I use this slide not to dismiss the very real challenges and tragedies of this year, but rather to say that where we could, uh, we tried to pivot towards positive, productive responses. In March, I remember even before we pivoted to telework, very early in March, we were having discussions inside the building at NSF, recognizing the degree to which the academic hiring, the faculty hiring in particular within our field was likely to be impacted by what lied ahead. And indeed, in response to that, we're thrilled to have funded a program that's being run by CRA and CCC of emergency postdocs. From March, an idea that sort of drew from a previous CI Fellows 2008 program um, became funding that flowed, became an application process with a July deadline and a selection process. And so now in what has gotta be record time, we have a new class of 59 two-year postdoc fellows. We're thrilled that CRA and CCC used a max two principle, uh, meaning no more than two of those uh, postdocs could have gotten their PhD from any one school. 
And no more than two of those postdocs could end up landing at the same post institution. By accomplishing those max two ideas, as well as other balancing ideas across topics, we ended up with a cohort in which there are roughly 50, 60 universities represented among 59 fellows, either as the PhD grantor or as the host institution for those fellows. And we also have extraordinary topical diversity and believe it or not, 52% female in this class, despite the overall pool of our field. Uh, So the next steps, much like uh, we're doing with these rapids, the next steps are cohort building through virtual meetings and guest lectures so that these folks don't simply have sort of a job, but they are getting a sort of strong degree of mentoring and community formation. I will say that um, when we did this, it was a hunch about impact on the job market. Uh, We now have from Craig Wills at Worcester Polytechnic an analysis that shows roughly a 50% drop, so roughly cut in half in size job ads thus far for the upcoming hiring season. And we're keeping an eye on opportunities to do another program of this type going forward. Another response that we did was Civic Innovation Challenge, which actually was on the books and planned before COVID. It is a program that size has set up to build on our Smart and Connected Communities program, um, but to flip the dynamic. And in particular, where Smart and Connected Communities encourages researchers to hear from their community and then propose research accordingly, uh, Civic flipped the dynamic and said, communities should apply with their public health challenges, their public education challenges, their public safety challenges, and bring a researcher along with them. The idea being to accelerate the impact of SNCC style research. Given where we were in April, May, and June, it was clear that there were an awful lot of public health, public education, and public safety challenges that communities would want to take on. So we actually expanded the funding that was available for Civic, extended the deadline by a month, and ended up with an August deadline and uh, roughly 400 entries of which about half were directly on COVID-related topics. Another program involved $2 million of funding from NSF size out to US Ignite to acknowledge another challenge that has faced us in 2020, namely the disproportionate impact that COVID has had on the learning opportunities in underserved communities. And in particular, the goal here is for US Ignite to convene a set of novel broadband deployments proposed proof of concept broadband deployments, specifically aimed at supporting virtual learning in underserved communities with different types of underserved communities reflected. So different population densities, demographics, geography, and so forth. Uh, So so this program now is in its call for proposal stage and it's accepting these proof of concept ideas to go forward in funding different virtual learning scenarios in the future. On a related note, when the year started, NSF size was pleased to have been the convener of the Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research or Power Consortia, uh, which is a public-private partnership with around three dozen companies and associations coming together with NSF to create test beds. And you can see the antennas, the sort of blue antennas with orange dots represent existing power test beds that are intended to be places where people could bring their broadband research ideas, their next generation wireless ideas, their 5G and beyond ideas, and test them at scale, Uh, whether that's new protocols, new ideas for open RAN networks and so forth. In the midst of COVID, we actually had a merit review process that was underway uh, for another solicitation for the Power Consortium This one specifically aimed at affordable rural broadband. And you could imagine that in a year where we all pivoted to remote access so universally, the notion of affordable rural broadband uh, was again very resonant with (laughs) all the places, the eventualities that COVID had put us into and the challenges that we had faced with COVID. By the summer, we had two finalists, but we didn't really have a viable way to do the on-site physical site visits that would usually be the last step in such a review process. In lieu of those physical site visits, uh, we made the choice 
to fund both of them with seed funding for a year. And so we now have two new entries in our power advanced wireless map, namely the University of Nebraska and Iowa State University, looking specifically at these affordable rural broadband issues uh, with a bake-off that we hope will culminate next year in the funding of one or both of them as full-fledged power test beds. Onward and upward, over a weekend in March, NSF co-led the formation of the COVID-19 HPC Consortium. I'm extraordinarily grateful for SISE's Office of Advanced Cyber Infrastructure that was so essential to the formation of this consortium, uh, along with our partners at OSTP, IBM, and Department of Energy. Over the months that followed, this consortium grew to over 40 consortium members, public entities, private entities, domestic entities in the US, international entities around the world, all contributing computational resources towards better understanding COVID-19 and its transmission. I'm really proud of the role that NSF's resources played in this and in particular sizes OAC resources. 46% of the projects that ran on the COVID-19 HPC consortium uh, ran on NSF resources. 30% of the compute cycles were on NSF resources. We were the largest single provider of resources and every project that on-ramped onto this consortium or did allocation for this consortium came through the NSF funded exceed effort. So I'm really grateful to the PIs who made this possible. I'm really proud of the NSFers who made this possible. And a couple of weeks ago, the fruits of some of that investment were made clear when this NSF funded team running on NSF funded resources received the ACM Gordon Bell Special Prize in HBC-based COVID-19 research. Uh, so in particular, this team did very detailed atomic scale modeling of the SARS-CoV-2 spike, that thing we see in all those pictures. And in particular, the dynamic modeling to understand how the sugary coating on that spike either exposes or conceals the spike as part of the contagion vector. The other thing I'm proud of is the fact that while, while we're sort of reaching a new stage in the COVID-19 pandemic, the lessons learned from the nimble standing up of these resources um, were something that nobody wanted to lose sight of. And in particular, I believe it's out today, uh, there's a request for information about how to take the lessons learned from the COVID-19 HPC consortium and consider the formation of a national strategic computing reserve that can be turned on nimbly in future such scenarios. SIZE had long been discussing a shift to no deadlines and frankly, we made the decision to go to no deadlines in our core small grants before the full impact of COVID was apparent and independent of COVID. However, as AD and as a member of our research community, I know what a challenging semester fall 2020 has been for the academic community. And it makes me feel better. It makes me able to sleep at night to know that among the many deadlines that our size researchers had, among the many challenges that our size researchers had this autumn in pivoting their classes in managing remote research and managing family issues, it makes me happy to know that there wasn't a core small deadline there. Uh, so when you are ready to write your core small proposal, you can send it in. We see this as an opportunity for a great deal of technical nimbleness that if you have an idea in January, you can submit that idea in February rather than waiting for the following autumn. We also were gratified by the degree to which this might have been a help to people under the very challenging conditions this fall. As a new AD, I came in in February and by March I was teleworking. As a new AD would have normally been going out maybe once a month to different campuses to talk to the community, making sort of actual seminar visits. That obviously wasn't possible this year. Um, so by about April or May, I have pivoted my plan from face-to-face -face visits, which obviously were all canceled, to a series of virtual campus visits. 
I did 30 of them in the first four months and I'm continuing to do them. So if you would like your campus to be on my list, just send me an email. We continue to schedule them and we are happy to sort of go out broadly. When I give the talk, it's typically a technical vision. It covers organizational themes uh, that I see important to the field, like the three that you see here. Um, and then a fairly lengthy Q&A discussion with the size relevant faculty on your campus. And those have been an extraordinary way to keep connected with the community, to explain the rationale for things like no deadlines, to get the word out about different programs like CI Fellows, while also um, obviously all being in sort of this remote work world. I'll draw to a close here much the way I started, which is with a sense of gratitude. We have an amazing research community. I am so proud of what size research has done over the years to let us have this Zoom today. And I'm proud of what size research is going to do going forward on pandemic prevention and on so many other topics. The key is, I think, to stay when it comes to this particular topic, the key is to take the many wonderful efforts that are underway and um, make sure they stay aligned and can sort of synergize off each other. And so with that in mind, I'm just gonna ask that you all please stay engaged in this virtual organization and, and stay involved in its, its activity so that it can be a really vibrant community. As was mentioned, the goal is a research roadmap for size and the related research community. And I can completely vouch for how much we at NSF are looking forward to having those kinds of community roadmaps to help us guide future programmatics. So you have a chance to weigh in and be a part of that. And so with that, I will stop sharing my screen and thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Margaret. What a wonderful presentation. It's a pleasure to, to have you here today, uh, it really is. And I think your commitment is quite apparent from all the different projects that you folks are undertaking at NSF. So thank you again. And uh, you have our commitment that we'll try to build a very strong organization and come up with a good, good plan. Do you have scientific nuggets that we can say that the size community has contributed to address the COVID crisis? I mean, there are lots of activities, but at the end of the day, in science, the results matter. So we've done a lot of activities. Can we talk about concrete results where we have made a measurable contribution? So I think there's two layers to this. So one are all the results that we have from, you know, size is 35 years old now. We have 35 years worth of results that allow us to be here today. So we have results on advanced networking over the year. I take the data. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. And there are some scientific results that have shown how those scalable networks responded to huge crises in March, April, May. Uh, when it comes to the virus studies themselves, I think that Romeo Maro's team that I showed a couple slides ago is a wonderful result in, in very quick uh, speed. And then in addition, their data is now part of an international data commons and so there's a whole broader set of the scientific community that is able to use that data to build on it. Uh, I think there's also some really exciting and interesting results around contact tracing and social networks that are likewise something that size can be very proud of. The question in the chat from Khalid Malik, are there some more funding options in the near future? If yes, what programs should one target? Uh, so I think um, the size core solicitation is is live and we have no deadline. So you can send in a small. And I think we would have every expectation that uh, many of our research community will be inspired by the events of this year and send in proposals accordingly. Uh, we're also in discussions about future funding programs that might be sort of more attuned to these specific areas. And all I can say there is stay tuned. Lily, Rani had asked, will there be follow-on workshops? I can perhaps just quickly say that, yes, there will be many, many, and I think we'll hear a little bit more about the plans going forward. Could I add one thing to Margaret's comment, if, if I may? Please, Sorry please. to interrupt. This yes. is, I'm Jeremy Epstein. I'm the lead for the SATSE program. 
in addition to the core programs that Margaret mentioned, many of the research areas may come up, may be relevant to SATC, in particular, lots of privacy related stuff. And we also have no deadlines in SATC, so we encourage you to submit to us as well. Uh, let's thank Margaret again. Thank you very much, Margaret, for an excellent talk, uh, telling us all the work that NSF is doing and plans to do. We really appreciate the support that we have received thus far, and uh, we hope to continue the good work. Mm -hmm.